Hey guys, it's Renee. So for today's DIY is going to be for a nail art. We're going to be making two different sides of dotting tools. We're going to be making three designs and it's just pretty easy to make. It's just out of things around the house, such as hair clips and pins. So before we start designing the dotting tool, we are going to see which of these objects that I chose actually work. I chose this ones because these are the things that I have the most. You can always get them at the drugstore or just some art and supply store. They're super affordable. So I'm going to be using this color and it's this one, if you're curious, is from Shiner Glaze. I'm just going to add a huge, well not huge, but kind of big amount of polish in here. I'm going to open my bobby pin like this. It's not hard, just like that. And then and this is going to be my dotting tool. So I'm just going to grab it like straight and then I'm going to be putting some dots to see if the size is okay. I like the size a lot and I like how smooth it goes. So this one is going to be one of my dotting tools. Just going to do the same, putting the, the dots underneath it and I like it so far. The sizes of my dots are smaller than the previous ones, so this is going to be two different dotting tools that are going to give me two different sizes of dots. So this one's I like. And last but not least is this one. And I'm going to be doing the same thing. And it gives you a bigger dot. Kind of looks like, you know, the one that I did with the bobby pin. But for some reason I feel like the bobby pin ones are nature, those dots than this one and when I dip it into the polish it doesn't really feel good. So this one I'm not going to be using as a dotting tool. So I'm just going to be using this one and my okay, bobby pin. For this one the first thing I'm going to be doing is try to cut this part using my pliers. And I'm just going to cut about that much. Sometimes you just can't do it so you just have to kind of move it around and there you go. And this one I'm just going to leave like that. Okay, for design number one, which is going to be for like the bobby pin one, we're just going to be working with, it. as you can see, a bunch of colors. And this is a translucent clay. This is the white one. And then I have another bunch of colors. I'm just going to be working over a zip look back just to avoid any kind of stuff that my um, table would have. I'm just going to go and kind of make small balls out of all of this. Just kind of like... Kind of like this. I'm just using Sculpey Tree by the way. I'm using polymer clay. I don't really know if I mentioned that. As you can see when you're working with clay, this happens. So you have to be cleaning your hands between each color. My next one is going to be this rose color. And then the orange. And you're going to be doing pretty much the same thing. With same the blue and the green. And I would use it to do to make the red at the end because it's the most pigmented one. And if you do, for example, the red one and then go with, you know, do this one, you're going to have like stains of red in there, just so you know. And I'm just going to start the fun, just picking random beads and just placing them one on top of the other and just. And I try to push them in Whoop. and just try to make them like together, you know. There's no particular order of things. I'm just going to do this. Just try to make a group out of them. You can make this as big or as small as you want to. It's totally up to you. Try to be pushing them as you go so everything kind of is in a group together. So you're trying to make or just shape a cane as you go. This reminds me, I don't know if you saw Willy Wonka when they were at the factory and there were some candies that some kid was eating. There was a candy that reminds me of this right now. This is so much fun. Once I have done this, I'm going to use another Ziploc bag and this one is clean. And I'm going to just try to kind of push them just a bit. I just want them all to be, you know, stacked together. And then in all those places that I feel like they need something just a bit, you know, to hold them, I'm just going to take some small piece of translucent clay and I'm just going to place them in there. That's one that I feel like is going to break anytime soon. 
trying to add more support. Once I've baked them, the whole thing is going to be more steady. I'm just going to go to the top and just kind of smooth the top in there a bit, like that. And then here, again, this side is going to be where I'm going to place my tool, which is pushing it towards it, like that. Push it as much as you would like to. Once you think you're done and ready to bake, take it and just kind of uh, simulate you adding dots. And if that feels comfy, as thick as it is, then you're ready to go. So this one is ready. I'm just going to go and work on the other one so we, I can make both of them at the same time. Okay guys, for the second design, which is going to be the other, you know, the thinner dotting tool, I'm just going to use my leftovers and I'm just going to sort of a rainbow pattern. Then I'm just going to roll it. Oh, I found out yesterday that I had some purple. I didn't add them on my other dotting tool because I didn't know I had it, but I do. So I'm just going to do the same. You can take as many as you want if you want a bigger dot, dotting tool. Choose more, of course. So I'm just going to go again with the colors of the rainbow. Okay, once I have done that, I'm just going to grab a translucent polymer clay. And this is how much it's going to be probably a lot to cover this whole thing. So I'm just going to take this one and then I'm going to be using my clay condition machine that is basically a pasta machine. It's from the brand Sculpey. If you don't have this, you can just roll it with, you know, the regular roller doesn't really matter, but I'm going to use it because, well, I have it and because I'm looking for a really small sm setting. So, okay, guys, I ended up using setting number nine, and this is really, really thin. And I'm just going to be working over a new piece of plastic bag, which is a Ziploc bag. So, I'm just going to cut the excess from both sides so it fits my, my thing here so I'm just going to go ahead and put this one in here over this so I'm just going to kind of push it I'm going to push this rainbow part towards my clay the translucent one and I'm just going to start drawing it I cut it as close to the and then I'm just going to go and then close it what I'm doing here is just um, pulling both of, of my white sides so they kind of close the whole thing and then I'm just going to roll it a bit and I'm just going to close it and maybe get rid of that excess that I have as you can see clay close it, it closes it I have one side in there and then I'm going to go back to this side I'm going to do the same pulling the excess away just smoothing those parts I found this um, barbecue stick and I'm just going to really fast try to smooth this part. I'm going to go with my pen and I'm just going to put it inside. Go as, as in the middle of you as you can just until you feel good about you know where it's at. And this is what it looks like from the top. So right now I'm just doing this, kind of pushing it so it looks pointy. And test it before you're going to actually bake it to see if this feels good and then I got this one which is kind of a fail because it was like supposed to be like the original translucent with the rainbow pattern but it didn't work out but I was not going to throw it away I just decided to do something with it and I took my acrylic paints for this one and first did two coats of my acrylic body paint once it was right I decided to take one make it sponge and just cut it into small pieces and first I made some pink so I just mixed some white and red then I took my pliers, the ones that I use for DIY projects and stuff like that and then I went with my sponge and just sponged the, the color in it I knew I wanted, you know, some line peeking through each at the end of each color I just, and I wanted a gradient effect as well so I just took on my sponge then I went with the purple and did the same thing leaving space for that white space that I was talking about before and then again made that gradient effect on the top and the bottom part of that, of that purple and once I was done with the purple I took the blue one and these are just basic colors that I'm working with, nothing special and the same thing then for the green one, so I just took the yellow one and did the same thing on the top and the bottom making that gradient effect and I finished the whole thing with orange 
I'm just going to go with my purple and my really thin brush and I'm just pretty much going to draw a small line. So here I'm going to be making the blue one. Then I'm going to be working outside because I'm going to be adding some gloves. I would suggest to work with some gloves as well. And because I was not going to be like two hours with my tool in my hand until it dried, I just did this kind of small trick and I took my pliers and I rolled some tape on the corners of my pliers so that way it wouldn't open. The fat part of my bobby pin kind of was blocking the whole thing to just fall and I did that in the other one as well first the gloss and then letting it dry and that's pretty much all I wanted to share and I just love how this turned it's pretty much around things as I said in the beginning that we all have around house and things that um, most of us use really often and if not they are super easy to find and super affordable hope it helped you and if you enjoyed it don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you try it out don't forget to send me your curations over twitter and instagram i would love to see that if you haven't already subscribe to my channel for more stuff share it and thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you later and take care bye guys